All right. Good afternoon and uh, good morning to those joining us who are not on the East Coast. My name is Mike Brew. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing for Advanced Partners. Advanced Partners is an industry leading provider of payroll funding and back office support with a focus on the staffing industry. With 25 years of experience helping staffing firms grow, we understand just how important marketing is to the success of your business. With that said, we're excited to begin our much anticipated presentation with Clear Edge Marketing in just a moment. But first I wanted to turn it over to my partner, Alan Thurston for a few housekeeping items. Alan. All right. Thank you, Mike. And we will start by reviewing a few things uh, for your information. First off, this webinar is being recorded we will send everybody a link to the recording via a post event email following this event. To submit a question, please use the ask a question widget indicated uh, uh, in your console. Uh, and it, even if your question isn't answered, it is valuable in helping us develop additional resources for you, uh, such as FAQs or articles or even future events like today's webinar. Uh, the learn more section is where you can find all of the resources for today's event. There's going to be some resources our uh, partners are going to be sharing. Those are listed as well as a copy of today's presentation slides. A survey is going to launch at the conclusion of this event, and we hope you take a moment to fill it out as your feedback is very valuable to us to refine the content we provide to you. You can always uh, actually complete the survey anytime uh, as it is on the console for easy access. And for any technical issues during the webcast, please select that help widget, it's a little question mark, uh, and that provides the uh, resolutions to some of the most common issues uh, that might be uh, coming up. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you, um, Mike, to uh, move forward with the presentation. Perfect, thank you, Alan. I do want to reiterate that the content shared in today's session is a matter of opinion based on the extensive experience of our expert panelists and should be looked at as such. With that said, it is my pleasure to introduce our presenters for today's session, who will also happen to be two of the most amazing partners that I've had the pleasure of working with. First is Gina Kelly. Gina has worked across digital marketing for 20 plus years. She is head of digital at Clear Edge Marketing, where she leads a full stack team that delivers on digital strategy, demand gen, website strategy, SEO, social, paid media, and marketing automation with a focus on talent, staffing, and HR tech firms. Gina is from the Cleveland area and is looking forward to the nice weather that will no doubt be heading our way in the coming days and weeks. Next, I'd like to introduce Lori Blanford. Lori oversees a portfolio of client companies for Clear Edge and has been with the company for six years. She leads marketing strategies and initiatives, including brand, digital, and outsourced marketing engagements Lori previously led the in-house marketing for companies in the staffing, IT, consulting, and recruiting tech space. She currently resides in the Chicago area with her family. Gina, Lori, thank you so much for taking the time today. I'll now turn it over to Lori to get things started. Great. Thanks so much, Mike, and thank you for your committed partnership to marketing. Great to have you all with us today. Uh, Gina and I are excited to spend this next hour with you talking about marketing. And before we dive in, here's a quick intro to Clear Edge Marketing. We are a 17-year-old full-service marketing firm that partners with companies in the recruiting, workforce solutions, and talent tech space. Fun fact about us, we've been remote since day one and enjoy a fully remote workforce to this day. Our team is made up of people who come directly from the talent and technology industries, people who have worked in marketing departments and know the industry very well. We have a unique perspective and have helped many companies like yours achieve their marketing goals. Our support is designed to meet companies where they're at on their marketing journeys from one-off marketing support projects to fully outsourced marketing support and everything in between. We even provide fractional CMOs and executive search support if you're looking for marketing or, uh, leaders for your organization. We're heavily involved in the industry through various organizations. And if we haven't yet, we look forward to crossing paths with you at an industry event soon. All right, so let's talk about what we love, marketing. We held the first marketing bootcamp webinar last year where we dove into details about building a marketing foundation. 
For those of you who didn't attend or haven't viewed, I'm going to run through a recap as having these items in place is critical to digital marketing success. And for those of you that have not seen it, I encourage you to watch the recording on the Advanced Partners website. It provides some great examples of staffing firms that have built solid marketing foundations. All right, so let's start with the basics, the definition of marketing. The dictionary defines marketing as the action or business of promoting and selling products or services. In staffing, people are the product. Companies have talent needs to fill and staffing companies provide the needed talent. And I know I don't need to tell all of you this, um, it's competitive out there. According to SIA, before the pandemic, there were about 25,000 staffing and recruiting companies. That's a lot of companies to be competing with. Uh, after the initial shock of the pandemic in 2020, the US staffing industry overall has experienced solid years of robust growth, 33% expansion in 2021, and 17% in 2022, reaching about 219 billion. Although there's been some softening, indicators are that 2023 is going to continue to be a strong year. All right, so let's talk about foundational marketing elements. What should you be doing to market your business and stand out from the other 24,999 firms out there? Um, you're offering similar services, targeting similar companies and candidates. What should you be focused on? On our last webinar, we talked about marketing in terms of a crawl, walk, run approach, and we really embrace this. Most companies cannot do everything at once. And even the largest staffing companies out there didn't go all in on marketing from the start. Crawl, walk, run. They grew their teams, budgets, and efforts over time. So what do you need? We have found that these are the foundational elements that serve staffing companies well, and certainly what you need in place for successful digital marketing programs. So let's start with messaging and branding. Having a differentiated message, meaning you know your competitors and knowing yourselves, identifying what we like to call that brand spark, and not just talking the talk, but walking the walk, demonstrating how you're different, living up to your brand promise. Also your employer brand, how to attract talent to your organization. That's candidates that you may be placing as well as your internal team members. Personas, so building those targeted buyer profiles, really understanding their pain points and how you can help them. Website, having a healthy, maintained, mobile and SEO optimized website is critical in digital marketing. And yes, there is such a thing as website health and we'll be talking about that uh, a little bit later. And finally, having a presence on social media. We know that's also critical. Um, there are a lot of different out, uh, options out there, so it's important to know what is best for your business. Which channel should you be spending your efforts on? And once these are in place, in addition, I'll say to email capabilities, we're ready for content and tactics, and then coming soon, the digital marketing conversation. So let's start with content. It's really the fuel for your engine. It's a great way to build your brand and establish your company and your team as thought leaders in our space. Too often though good and often great content doesn't serve its potential because it lacks amplification. So having that solid foundation in place is really key to leveraging your content and making it work for you and your marketing program. Thought leadership content, this is a value to your audience. You're sharing helpful information, you're providing your unique perspective. Looks like things um, including blogs, articles, contributed content. It's not selling yourselves, it's positioning yourselves as trusted advisors and experts in the space. Lead generation campaigns. These may include target account programs. If you have a list of companies you're targeting, they may include account penetration campaigns if you're trying to gain more market share at your existing clients, which by the way is an often overlooked revenue opportunity. A lot of companies think of marketing in terms of uh, new logos, not realizing that they may have only a small percentage of the market share in existing accounts and there's a lot of opportunity there and marketing can help gain that market share. 
lead nurture campaigns. Not everyone is going to be ready to buy from you right now. So it's important that we continue to nurture those relationships, keep leads engaged, and keep you top of mind for when that need arises. SEO. Well, Gina and I were talking before we went live here and just laughing how SEO could be a webinar um, all in itself. So we know now SEO is not about making sure a certain keyword appears 25 times on a page. It's about website health, user experience, and optimized quality content. And there's no gaming the system, the system being Google. Um, and it's a pretty logical symptom, uh, system, excuse me. It prioritizes the user experience, quality content, and the technical health of the site. And when it comes to investing in great content, we want to make sure that your audience comes across your content through search. So Google ranks the content on healthy, optimized sites higher, thereby increasing those chances that you connect with that target audience and that they find you. SEO is an ever-evolving science and art, and for those like Gina and others on our team, it's a passion. And Gina will be talking more about that uh, in just a bit. Case studies and testimonials. So these are helpful in helping to convince um, prospects and convert them into buyers of your services. And finally, referral programs. Um, this is really about rewarding your community for sharing their good experiences with your company. It can be a very powerful recruiting tool. I've seen companies with really strong employer brands um, where referral programs are the source for 70% of their candidates. It, they work. Um, and as I mentioned, it's really about committing to that user experience, investing in your brand, and delivering on the brand promise. So in addition to the referral programs, all these others are applicable when it comes to finding talent. We know how important it is to engage and nurture talent um, throughout the course of their assignment, how important redeployment is as far as profitability is concerned. And there are a number of automation tools out there that can help you with the management of that ongoing engagement that's so critical to those uh, talent relationships. Okay, so we did a quick recap of the marketing foundation. We talked a little bit about tactics and so often we get companies that wanna dive right in. But it's so critical to first determine what you're trying to accomplish. We start this with a marketing strategy and a marketing plan. It's the roadmap for your business. Don't leave home without it. So what we've provided here is a template with placeholder content for a marketing plan. We like this one, but there are certainly tons of others out there. Find the one you like and put it to use. It's a great exercise to invest in, and it's something that executives across the company, in absolutely for marketing, should be coming back to often. So just a heads up that a sound marketing plan is going to involve a lot more than just filling in a template like this. It's a comprehensive research exercise in examining the competitive landscape and really understanding the goals of the business and the various perspectives and priorities of its stakeholders. So we like to start with the company's mission statement. Everything marketing does should serve that mission statement. And next is identifying clear business goals and objectives. So you can start high level with a revenue target of $50 million, let's say, but take it further. How do you see that breaking it down? You could break it down by contract and direct hire, for example, or by region or sector or specialty. It's important to do so, so then you can proportionally align marketing budget and efforts to those goals and objectives. So next step, is um, the strategy. So the strategy is to meet those goals and objectives. So we're not talking about specific tactics yet, um, but how you're going to do it. And then you can drill down into those specific tactics that are going to help you achieve those goals and objectives. And those are going to look different across every organization, um, depending what tools you have available to you, depending how you've prioritized the various marketing channels that are available to use. And last but not least, 
um, for all of us, marketing people, executives, all of us, we need to determine ways to measure success and, and measure our efforts. And this is where we work with the tools that are available to us to determine what metrics can be used to track um, how things are performing and if what we're doing is working. Because marketing is really about measuring and improving. It's, a, it's in constant flux. So it's important that we have those metrics in place for measurement. All right, so I think we covered um, the re recap. Hopefully that didn't go too quickly for you, but I know that you're eager also to talk about digital marketing. So at this time, it is time for me to throw the keys to that digital marketing car over to Gina. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Lori. So this message is really important to me because um, as Lori, just mentioned, you really shouldn't do one of these without the other. Um, your marketing plan tells you how to get where your business needs to go and your digital marketing strategy drives the car. Um, in fact, it will even tell you what kind of vehicle to drive and what kind of fuel to put in along the way. Um, but instead of planes, trains, and automobiles, um, digital um, is driving SEO, social media, paid media, and automation. And um, it, it drives how the, the content campaigns from those channels will direct the right people to your website, where they go on your website, and how well they'll be served once they get there. So Lori touched on each of these along the way, but we're going to look um, a little more closely at um, what each of these channels are, what each of those practices are, and how they can help with your greater digital strategy. So SEO um, is, of course, search engine optimization. Um, and Lori touched on this too, and I think it's really important to emphasize that SEO is so much more than a bunch of keywords being shoved into, uh, into headlines and page titles. Um, ranking in the top three results on a, uh, for a term that relates to your business and your audience um, will lead to more qualified traffic to your website, um, especially from people who are like, really actively seeking to solve their problems. Um, and there are also people at that stage who may not even know that your brand exists. So, you know, it's important to, to think about it from that perspective, but also um, what I refer to as SEO's realist magic um, is that keyword research is market research. When you're able to see and understand the words people actually use and the questions they are asking um, when no one is watching, um, it really helps you understand, you know, are you calling your solutions what they're calling them? Are, you know, your job titles, what they're searching for. Um, you know, we want to make sure that you're aligning, you know, the way you're talking about problems, outcomes, goals, um, again, the names of solutions um, in a way that actually matches the way the people who are in your audience are doing, are naming those things. So SEO research um, can and should, you know, give you direction on um, what's on your website, you know, what headlines to use, what page titles to use, um, but also, you know, what, what content is on your blog, what themes are you covering, what related topics, um, also, you know, what's in your eBooks or white papers. Um, but it doesn't stop there. Um, when you think about those words, terms that people are using that you're seeing coming, coming up in your SEO research, you want to make sure that that feeds into your social media, how you're talking about, um, topics in your emails, um, and even in your paid ads. And we'll talk about each of those now. So social media is, um, it's not just about posting things um, in, you know, on LinkedIn. Um, it's really carrying on an engaging conversation. Um, it's not just a bunch of individual posts talking about yourself, your brand, your solutions. Um, but consider you know, the, the channels that your organization is spending time and energy on um, with respect to how you can add value to someone's day. Um, we, for our clients, often recommend a healthy balance of educational content, so articles, tips, videos, social media graphics, um, links to your own blog, um, as well as third-party content from non-competitors, obviously. Um, but, you know, educational content that can help people think about and address their challenges, um, what pain points they have, um, and then weave in posts and content about how your organization can help them address those issues. Um, it's important too, whether you're investing time on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, um, or any other channel, um, that you consider how your entire team 
you know, whether it's large or small, can help elevate your brand and your social media profiles. So, you know, when we think about social media, it's not just how many times should you post from your corporate page, but what are you posting there? And how should your senior leadership interact with it? What else should your senior leadership be talking about? How's your sales team helping to amplify your brand? Um, what are your recruiters doing? What are your other team members doing to help amplify your brand's message? Um, whether it's message about your um, your solutions, the, the jobs, uh, or you know clients that you're working with, or even your employer brand. So you know helping to elevate and build trust around who you are as a company and how you treat the people who work there and how they feel about you. Um, and keep in mind too that sales team and recruiters in particular have an opportunity to work into the customer journey or candidate journey, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but with respect to social, you think about you know your brand has the opportunity to inter you know introduce what you do and who you are to people, and your sales and recruiting team has the opportunity to through social to segue into a one-on-one -on -one relationship. So it's really important, again, to think about that bigger picture of, um, of social media being a conversation um, and a relationship builder, not just individual posts that happen X number of times a week. So paid media covers a range of paid advertising opportunities. Um, and we often focus on how paid search and paid social can help support, supplement, and amplify what you're doing in these other channels. Um, it can help support and supplement um, increasing your overall traffic, your brand awareness, and supporting your lead gen goals. Um, I'll go into a breakdown of how and what that balance looks like in a bit, um, but paid ads can, um, can help introduce your brand and increase brand awareness by getting your name, um, your value proposition, and um, most favorably, uh, valuable, actionable pieces of content in front of more of the right people. Um, too often, we see brands um, putting money behind just putting ads out that are expected to convert right away. But this is a relationship. You know, people need to understand who you are, trust you, <laughs> build confidence in you, understand what you do, and see how that perfectly aligns with what they need before they're willing to make that, you know, take that contact step. So when we're thinking about paid media, do, we do want to think about that bigger picture and the, the potential in it. Um, it's not just about going straight to a contact form or uh, you know, a schedule, uh, a call to action, but think about what people need to see and feel and what questions they need to answer before that to have enough trust and confidence in you to take that step. Keep in mind that depends on your audience and we'll, again, talk about more of that in a minute. So then of course there's automation. So once you get those people to your website, once you get those people to convert, um, we, we wanna make sure that you know, there's no radio silence. So we'll mostly talk about email today, um, but automation workflows can cover, uh, cover and personalize email, um, chat, messaging, um, ads, um, even landing pages. So we want to make sure that you know, when we are thinking about how we're using automation, it's one, to make sure that you're able to use the data you collect about people's interactions with you to deliver a better experience. So should they go on to a different workflow? Um, if someone has scheduled a meeting with you, they need to go down a workflow that you know, acknowledges that you know them now and helps nurture them toward you know, whatever that next step is. If they've never engaged with you, then it's a different nurture so that you, know, you can continue to inform them, educate them, engage them until they're ready to either buy or entertain the conversation of buying. But the, um, another aspect of that is also one, um, you're not doing this manually. So it's, it's data informed and also taking the manual work out, um, but also it's measured. So you can on a regular basis um, measure engagement and gain an understanding of what's working, what's not, and continue to refine your audience segments and how you're approaching them and you know, what you're seeing work in the actual market. So a quick side note, um, we haven't, we haven't provided an exhaustive list um, between Lori's, uh, Lori's uh, foundation uh, that she covered and this set. Um, it, you know, there are a lot of other disciplines within marketing, um, specifically um, like user experience and conversion rate optimization as they relate to um, your website experience and um, lead gen. 
you know, we could have a separate <laughs> webinar about each of those. I'm happy to talk to anyone about UX and CRO in particular um, after this webinar, but I wanted to make sure that we're clear that this isn't exhaustive, but we wanted to focus on the most popular channels and the uh, most actionable ways that we can act help you today. All right, so now we get to look at something else. <laughs> so if you take nothing else away um, from today's talk, it's this. Digital marketing isn't about you. Um, it's not about your brand. It's about them, and it's about your audience. So even if you're not 100% clear on who that audience is right now, think about your own experience and your own preferences. People want to think about their own problems, their own challenges, hopes, dreams, goals. Um, you know, we think about what we need to do from our own experience and perspective. Um, we need, you know, as we learn what our options are and what our opportunities are, that's when we start thinking about what the names of solutions are. So when you think about marketing and how you're nurturing people, how you're getting on their radar, you have to think about them first. Um, so, you know, you would never, um, you would never put out posts or emails or advertising in a language that people don't speak. Um, so why not use what you know from tools like SEO, talking to your clients, looking at what's worked and what's not, and feed that into your marketing channels. So part of understanding how to speak to people is not just those words, but where they are. How much do they know? You know, how good are they at naming what their challenges and problems are? How aware are they of what solutions are available to them? Um, and a big part of that is understanding the journey. So this is a high level of what that journey looks like. We start from gaining awareness of you know, what our problems are called, um, what it's costing us not to solve those problems, and whether there are ways to address them. And then as we identify ways, we go into consideration and we understand the scope of our problems and start to find ways and consider ways to address them. And then we start narrowing down on what our options are and weigh the pros and cons of those solutions. And then we start digging into whether or not the, the providers of those solutions are trustworthy, they give us confidence, they align with where our values are. And then of course, once we make that decision, we go into retention. So are you delivering the service that they provide, they expected? Do, are they getting the outcomes? Are they having a good experience? What are you going to do with the value of that loyalty and that relationship? So this is what the customer journey looks like you know, in simple terms, but we all know that it really looks more like this. Um, so it's important to keep that in mind that putting out, you know, one social media post, trying one channel, trying one email, isn't necessarily going to communicate the point to every single audience member and move them to the next stage the way you might ideally hope it will. So the way to approach this is, of course, starting with your business goals and then walking back to understand how you can support your audience's goals at each step of that journey. So it's, um, it's not you know, just completely forgetting about why you're in business, what you need to accomplish, but really getting to um, an understanding of, of what they need to accomplish. You know, at the beginning of their journey, they, you know, they may not understand they need strategic workforce solutions. Um, they may just say, I don't know why I don't have the people to do the work I need, um, but really they have a bigger problem. And you know, getting from I, I don't have the right people and walking it back to you know, walking it um, to how you can help them with that can help you really speak you know to where they are at that time and walk them to understanding why that problem is too costly not to solve, and help them understand why you are a trustworthy resource to help them address it. So a few points, um, of course, you know, when we're, we're thinking about how to approach our audiences is um, first reaching them. So um, if you attended the um, previous web webinar, you spent some time um, talking about understanding your market, um, reaching um, each, of those, uh, each of those audiences and how to, um, how to get them into your funnel and progress down that journey. So first, we you know we want to get. Um, I'm sorry. First, we, we want to start by um, getting on people's radar and growing awareness of what you do. So you'll leverage pain point content, um, challenges, messages around outcomes to gain awareness. Um, you'll increase uh, by creating content um, on your website 
through social media and other channels, you know, you'll increase traffic to your website and engagement through those channels and um, help people progress through understanding why they need you. And so building demand is really showing your audience how, um, again, their problems cost too much not to solve. And you know, this is the path to addressing it. And so building demand helps, again, about create, uh, connect those dots between I have this problem and this is the way I can approach it. And then of course, when we move toward driving adoption, we, you know, we want to have automation in place. We want to consider personalized content um, that helps people, again, see how you are the right partner for them to address their problems. And then of course, you know, working, uh, working with you know, what you see and understand um, is engaging and helping people progress through that journey to get them to either take the step to buy or work, move into a one-on-one -on -one relationship with sales or recruiting, depending on your target audience. So, um, so we recommend when we, when we uh, talk about understanding your market and your buyer um, is digging deeper than kind of that high level understanding of I you know, service Fortune 500 companies or mid-sized warehouse companies, um, but you know, truly understanding who the decision makers are and who the influencers of decision make of decisions are at those target companies. Um, so, you know, we want to understand, you know, what uh, what pain points they're feeling as an individual, uh, what opportunities they have as an individual, and how that affects the company at large. And ultimately, what you're trying to do with um, with you know how you're delivering content, how you're delivering marketing activities, is uh, build confidence that um, they understand what they need, um, they understand what you do, and how again the two meet. And so, you know, of course, you know what we want to do is, you know, create a, um, a sustainable message that speaks directly to those individuals. So your message isn't simply, you know, we provide, for instance, staffing, or we place people, or we do A, B, and C. Um, but we, you know, we want to um, really target what your value is and what your position is to those individual personas. Um, so how and why you meet their needs better, um, you know, what your solution does and how your service, you know, provides a better experience than others in that market. But I think what's, uh, you know, we're not going to obviously, you know, create messaging on the spot, but what I think is really important here and applies across everything we've, um, we've talked about and will is that, you know, these things aren't set it and forget it. Your website shouldn't be built and never, you know, you shouldn't, shouldn't build it and then never touch it again. Um, same with your email workflows, you know, your approach to social media, even your messaging, everything should be tested with your audience and iterated on. People and in industries evolve. You know the competition might change. Someone may come in who does something in a different way, and suddenly, like that, is the ultimate value proposition. There could be a pandemic, and the whole world and you know all of the industries you know completely get turned on their head. And the way people do business, live life, you know, value what you do can change. But at your core, you know, you you know what your value proposition is, but you may need to modify how you're talking about it and how you deliver it to meet the present needs. So it's important more than anything to just understand that you need to stay in touch with your messaging and your channels to make sure they're aligned with what's happening right now. So a few ways to test and iterate um, on uh, um, delivering your message is of course, um, applying that message down the funnel. So this example is just an example, but it shows how you can align the purpose of your content with where people are in their journey. So, you know, we, you know, we want to think about, you know, what they're what they're experiencing in that moment and how they're ready to engage with your content. So at the higher end, you can see um, when people are gaining awareness of their pain points and opportunities. They may not be ready to, they may, they may not be aware of you yet. Um, so your job at this point as a brand is to inform them. Inform them about you know, what their pain points are called, how to address them, again, why it's costing them too much not to, uh, not to fix them. Um, and, you know, and help them understand that you're a trustworthy uh, resource for this. And you know, you'll eventually get to the point where you, know, you can introduce what your solutions are. But what you want to do at this early stage is use lower commitment content, like blogs, videos, social posts, ads, 
you know, you want to introduce yourself and provide a resource. Um, the reason why it's low commitment is this is a relationship. Uh, you know, you're just meeting them. Um, as you progress down the funnel and people are more invested in understanding what you do and how you can help them, you can get to the point where, you know, white papers, ebooks, lead gen um, comes into play. But first, you're going to, um, you know, you want to introduce yourself and again, build that confidence that you are the right partner resource for them to at least continue that journey through consideration, decision, retention. Um, you know, you want to build trust a little more at each step. And if you deliver value in those early stages, you won't have a problem collecting information and um, nurturing that relationship down the road. So um, as, the, <laughs> as the head of digital, um, you know, before you start writing that next blog uh, or creating that next you know, one pager or even starting a new social media campaign, I would say press pause uh, because it's really easy to, to launch digital tactics. Um, it's really easy you know, to, to start a campaign, to even update you know, your website or even build a website. I don't wanna say easy, that's like you know, a relative term, but you, know, you can go and do it. Um, but you wanna press pause because that's the biggest pitfall because that's where um, we do get into the, the situation where you, know, you start down a road and you, know, you put up the website and never visit it again. Um, it's not strategic. It's not explaining what you do. It's hurting your reputation. Um, it's, you know, the, the contact form isn't connected <laughs> to where it needs to go, or you don't have the automation in place to, uh, to serve and, you know, keep people engaged who, whose names you do collect. So you want to make sure that you're, you know, you are purposeful, methodical, and measured in how you're delivering and approaching digital marketing. So when you do just kind of jump in and you know start making the one one off infographic and then um, you start doing social posts and um, you know you make an ebook and then maybe you put some ads out there it looks like this it's just stuff happening but in a more ideal situation um, and you pause understand your audience and what their greater needs are you can align what your message is with your target audiences and what they need understand who within that audience you need to reach and how to reach them. And you know, again, nurture the relationship in a way that aligns with what they're ready to consume and how they're ready to engage. So the, the brief example we have here, and the writing is small, um, but our example is um, a company that specializes in diversity hiring. So instead of all of their content just being landing pages that say diversity hiring, diversity hiring, um, you know, we, we wanna pause and think about who their target audience is. Um, so, so we pause and think about, you know, their their targets are, you know, maybe Fortune 500 companies, um, who you know are in uh, uh, who are leaders in, in their field, and um, are kind of at a crossroads of being able to innovate. Um, these are, pro you know, when we kind of distill what their problems are, we understand that, you know, when we think about the HR uh, leadership within those companies, they're responsible for making sure they're attracting the right talent uh, and they're able to support the needs of, you know, a company that needs to innovate and stay ahead. So again, we, you know, we look at those, um, those personas and we understand what are the challenges that they're facing. They may be facing a challenge in this situation where um, they don't necessarily have the right talent to help the company innovate. It's not just a hiring challenge, but it's a greater um, organizational challenge. So then we um, take a step back and we, we do some research. We look at the, the content that's being produced by competitors. We look at um, content that's being produced about the value of diversity. Um, and then we look at um, search trends around innovation and, and um, how talent affects innovation. So what we arrive at is um, a few themes related to innovation, creativity, and diversity. We create, so we create a set of themes and supporting topics around um, innovation and diversity and how they can support an organization's um, business goals. And so we start with that list of, of SEO terms and we um, work with a content team to develop a content strategy. The topics that come out of that um, you know, may include innovation strategies. So again, we're not necessarily speaking directly to diversity hiring at this point, but speaking to a challenge and an opportunity. Um, 
Other topics may include the connection between diversity and innovation, and then of course, um, advantages, benefits, and dimensions of diversity hiring. So with that content strategy in place, then we think, what are we going to do with this? Um, and so we, the content strategy isn't just go write these 13 blogs. The content strategy is, this is the conversation you're having. And part of the demand gen strategy is taking those, uh, those themes and topics and breaking them down into where do we need to have these conversations? So we, we create um, uh, seed campaigns. So we educate our audience and um, build interest through um, social media, um, search optimized pages, uh, uh, landing pages and blogs, um, as well as our email campaigns. And then we develop lead magnets, like a webinar. Um, a webinar that's targeted at that, you know, uh, Fortune 500 HR leadership uh, audience. Uh, we may also um, have a, uh, a related white paper that would follow up that, web, uh, that webinar, and then um, an interactive report that can show him how, show them how to um, how to measure and take action on what metrics we talk about in those previous pieces. And then, of course, we create campaigns around those lead magnet um, pieces. So we uh, we seed the conversation in social. We um, do ads um, that promote the webinar and the report. And then we have nurture campaigns um, on the email front. So when we develop that audience in the webinar, we gain their contact information. We provide ongoing nurture related to the topic of the webinar, eventually start promoting um, the white paper, and then eventually start um, promoting the report. And based on um, the engagement that people have with those campaigns along the way, we can understand what's working, what's not. Are these topics attractive to these people? At what point in that engagement are people, you know, uh, asking for um, more information about some other topic or ready to have a conversation? So, of course, when we when we map out that demand gen strategy, um, we understand what content we need to create, and that goes into the content plan. Content plan outlines what assets those are. And then we get to, you need blog posts, video series, case studies, social graphics, et cetera. So um, the point of this, this slide is to show you, you know, there's a lot of work that should go in to help you plan out what those individual tactics are. Um, because what this helps you do is not only understand what you need to create, but how you need to use it and how you need to learn from it. So sequence really matters. And I, I touched on this now, but the, the reason why we have this um, fully fleshed out is, you know, when you take that step back and understand um, not only why you're doing something, but how it's serving your audience, it can help you understand what to measure and how to continuously improve. Um, again, if you take nothing else away from today, uh, it's when you create um, when you create digital marketing activities or assets, you don't want to just you know set, set them off into into orbit and you know hope they bring you back leads. What you want to do is take the time to understand what it's supposed to accomplish, and have the background data for, uh, on it to, to feel confident that will, and understand how to test and make sure that it's resonating with your audience. So it doesn't need to feel or be layered, slow, or clunky. Um, you know, what we've just shown you are, are you know, a, a few different phases that we go through to plan these things. But what the goal is with that strategic approach is to help you achieve a sustainable momentum. So what we have here is our flywheel. And as you deliver, um, you know, as we, we take the time at the front to understand and ident you know, identify and understand our audience, um, create that content that speaks directly to what they need, what they need to do, um, you know, what their challenges are. Uh, we also understand where it's best to deliver that information. Again, you're not talking about pain points, uh, you know, high, er, early journey pain points in, uh, you know, late journey emails because, you know, you've, you've already covered that. Um, and you don't want to have, um, you know, very, uh, like, you don't want to put, you know, demos, for instance, or consults as the first step in that experience because people haven't come to the point where they trust you yet. Um, so we wanted to take that time to, again, understand at the beginning who your audience is, what they need at each step, and, you know, build trust throughout that experience. 
So that's how you're bringing people into uh, into the relationship with you. And then as you have, you know, as you've attracted them to your social channels, to your website, to your blog, um, to any other, you know, through your ads, you want to continue to um, to engage them and help nurture them toward, you know, engaging with content where you know, lead gen content. So um, providing experience, you know, uh, value add experiences or content um, where, again, they will exchange their information uh, for it. And then you can continue to um, monitor how they're engaging with you, learn what's working, what's not, and um, put in place automation that is not only delivering um, emails, messaging, um, ads, um, optimizing pages, putting that on automation in place so the work is happening behind the scenes, um, but that you're spending more time looking at the results and um, iterating, tweaking, um, you know, testing value propositions and calls to action, that you're spending more time optimizing than creating a new. So you're not all, you know, not always starting from square one, trying to attract new people, but you're, you know, using what, uh, what materials you've, you've had, what campaigns you've had, learning from them and continuing to get better with each, uh, with each flow. So I've touched on this a bunch today, but so how do you know it's all, you know, it's all working together and it's being, you know, it's successful and going in the right direction. And that of course is measurement. So I've provided a few examples on the client marketing side and the recruitment marketing side of how to measure that you're going in the right direction. Um, on the client side, and actually for both, you know, looking at traffic is I think the most common um, and, and a very useful metric to keep track of. So, you know, you want to see if you have, you know, the if you have um, trending growth for new and returning visitors. Um, new people are, of course, people who have never been to your website. Um, and returning people who are people who are coming back. What you want to do um, over time is understand what balance you need of those. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but you want to think about, you know, what proportion of, of people have are coming through search and social? You know, what content are they looking, are they coming through? And, you know, what proportion of those people are coming back? And that can tell you, again, what um, how successful your content is and how well it's serving their needs. You also, again, want to look at those uh, at what sources are driving traffic to your website, what content they're looking at, and what the quality is of those visits. So are people reading entire blog posts? Are they completing forms? Are they going to more than one page? Um, so we want to think about, you know, the not only the, the volume of people who come in, but what's driving them there and what's keeping them there. Um, also looking at form, uh, form conversion rate. So we touched earlier, I said, I'm not gonna get into conversion rate optimization, but when we think about um, forms, you want to think about, you know, what are the barriers to entry? Is, you know, what you're offering on the other side of that form worth them giving you their information? Um, is the form too long? Are you getting, you know, are there other ways to get all of the information you're collecting on that form. Um, we often look at, you know, what percentage of people see the form, you know, what sources brought them there, and, you know, what does that tell us about their level of investment and, you know, how likely are they to complete the form? So it's, um, it's a really easy opportunity to kind of test that um, if you are seeing a lag in conversion. Um, so seeing the uh, number of people and the percentage of people who finish it um, is a really good uh, trigger for you to say, I need to test this now. Um, so we can go into um, the, uh, into, oh, sorry, uh, into um, paid components, but when we, before, when we get into paid campaigns, you wanna think more, um, more about, you know, what you're spending your money on and why. So when we think about brand awareness campaigns, make sure that, you know, you are um, framing what you want to accomplish uh, with that um, in an appropriate way with what your goal is. So if it's a brand awareness campaign, we want to look at traffic. We want to look at, you know, um, uh, engagement on social, um, increased following on social, things like that. If you're doing brand awareness, it's not necessarily going to um, produce leads right away. Your follow-up campaigns will. Um, so make sure that what you're measuring, you know, actually relates to the activity that you're you're executing. And then on the uh, the recruitment marketing side, 
you know, it's a similar approach. I think, um, one, you do have to think about these audiences in, uh, the res in respective ways, but you also want to make sure that the places you're, you're measuring, um, you know, what you're measuring in those areas matches up to, you know, who that audience is. So when we think about, you know, on the candidate side, we, you know, we want to see traffic to job posts, candidate related pages. We want to, we want to really dig in and see what the sources are um, for that traffic. And then when we think about paid uh, activities to drive traffic to job posts, you know, we want to look at the quality of candidates coming in through those sources, whether you're getting the quality that's worth, um, you know, that investment and what percentage of those people are actually completing applications and ending up, you know, in that higher position for, you know, being a quality candidate. And these are a few benchmarks that um, you can keep in mind when um, when going into um, executing on, on digital. Um, these are, of course, industry benchmarks, and they can vary. Um, it's important to know that you know. It's important to think about you know when you're um, planning your campaigns that it's not just you know uh, I need you know I. I need more business. <laughs> you know, you need to break down what needs to happen along the way, and that goes back to the idea of you know taking your business goals and walking it back. So when we think about you know your B two B marketing um, benchmarks, um, our goals will in include you know increasing brand awareness because they need to know that you exist before they'll be ready to engage. You need to have um, specific ways that you're going to measure that they engage. It may be. Um, you know, uh, visiting a piece of, uh, of content. And then the next step might be um, downloading a piece of content or filling out a form um, or, you know, and it may progress through um, scheduling a meeting. So consider breaking down those goals that are kind of nebulous um, into how activities can contribute to them, which we'll get to a specific breakdown in a minute. But when we think about goals, don't just, look at these goals and say, okay, I got to get 30% open rate. Um, look at your email, uh, your, your current like, email activities or your social media activities and um, benchmark where you are and start there. So first you want to think about, you know, where you are and where you'd like to be. You can break down your goals by understanding, again, what role each channel needs to play in it. So if your goal is to have um, 10 uh, MQLs per quarter, Think about the ways um, search traffic can contribute to that, um, like about how your blog can contribute to that, email, um, social media, et cetera. So think about what that target is. And then again, think about what activities need to happen for you to reach that goal. So if you need 10 MQLs per quarter, you might say, I need to increase my organic traffic by X percent. And then you would look at the ways that you could do that. So it might be launching campaigns, um, launching brand awareness campaigns, and then doing a paid campaign blended with um, organic social and email to promote a white paper. And then of course, um, do retar uh, you could do re retargeting or other paid activities to promote service pages. So with those goals in mind, um, you wanna look at each of the tools that you're using and how you can measure in them. So if you're using um, HubSpot to send email, if you're scheduling um, social media through Sprout or HubSpot, um, your website, you'll use something like Google Analytics. So check in and see what those tools are and what they're able to measure. And then um, we recommend, you know, breaking down, you know, what each of those goals are and how you're going to measure it in those tools. You can use a spreadsheet, which works perfectly fine. There are also free tools like Looker Studio that can make it more visual. So you would connect through um, a tool like uh, Google Analytics um, and be able to pull in uh, you know, performance on the website. Um, HubSpot, if you are using that, also has really great dashboarding tools. But ultimately, what you want is a unified view that your whole team can look at and say, here's how these uh, programs are performing together and how they're working toward our goals. And one of my um, favorite ways to, to use this data is, of course, um, you know, again, having that uh, unified view and, you know, each month, each week, whatever your cadence is, um, getting, you know, looking at the performance together saying, you know, here's what we learned and now here are our action steps. It's not about saying, yes, we increased traffic 12%, um, but it's more about saying, you know, we're 
we increase traffic this much and to reach our goal, we need to do A, B, and C. So our action steps you know, are the following and here's who needs to do them. So here's my brief breakdown. Um, so this is purely theoretical, um, but it's a good way to think about not just saying, let's get 10 MQLs per quarter and good luck, but really breaking down the numbers of it. So in this example, that's our goal. And our assumption here is a 1% conversion rate on the website. So 1% of the people who come to the website end up um, completing a form and contacting you for a consultation or whatever your action step is. So based on that, our objective, the way we're going to get there is to get a thousand new visitors to client-specific content, because we're talking about clients here, to client-specific content on your website per quarter. So when we think about that, it's not just let's just get every like get whatever traffic we can to the website. It needs to be specific to client content, and then it needs to be you know that amount per quarter. So then we break down you know what proportion each of these channels is responsible for. So in this example, we take what our existing spread is for these channels um, on the website. So in this example, search is responsible for forty percent of uh, traffic to the website. So in this case, search is responsible for getting 133 new visitors to client focused content to the website each month. And so when we break it down like this, it becomes much clearer of, you know, we, uh, we know what we have to accomplish, you know, this month or in, in the coming months. And what this helps us do is we can do search research and see, okay, are there ways that we can target higher volume terms? So can we get people who, you know, can we get, um, can we optimize our content for terms that more people are searching for than we're doing now? Or can we create new content and optimize it? Similarly, you know, we can use what we learned there to, uh, to improve how we're delivering social or we may even identify, you know, maybe we don't po we don't um, promote enough content or client focused content, client targeted content on social that leads to our website. So we increase that activity. Um, we may look, and then of course, you know, we look at how we're driving traffic to the website from email, what stage those people are are in, and how we can um, advance their relationship with us. And then um, I mentioned earlier that I would talk about this, but the way um, I often use paid is when I have this breakdown of how organic channels are going to help my goal, then I look at what the gap is and how can paid help me meet and exceed that goal. So in this case, when we look at how search, social, email are broken down, we have this 20% that we can invest in paid campaigns. So specific to client content, it may be um, a spread of um, doing brand awareness campaigns that um, push to ungated content um, and then follow up campaigns that promote value add or like white paper, or ebook or webinars, and then um, do retargeting campaigns that get people back. So you can see that it's not like none of this is is random um, and just kind of hopeful. It's here's what our goal is. This is what each channel is responsible for. And then week by week or month by month, we can look at how each of these are performing and see if we need to pull any growth levers or make adjustments within these channels to help make sure that they're meeting their individual goal. And I realize we're at the top, uh, uh, almost at the top of the hour. So we've talked about a lot today. I provided some resources that if you want to learn more about SEO, inbound marketing, using analytics, or even Looker Studio, we provided these resources at the end. All right, that was a lot. And let's move on to questions. Sure, thank you, Gina. Wow, what a great presentation. Uh, I know we're right at the top of the hour. We're gonna go real quick on just two questions. Um, the first one I see came through, it says, how big of a team is needed to run all of these areas of digital marketing? Great question. Uh, Gina, I don't know if you want to jump on this one or if Lori wants to. Yeah. Gina, go ahead. You run the team on our end. <laughs> um, so it depends. Everybody hates that answer. Um, what one, you know, you you need to understand what you're what you're trying to accomplish, what your budget is. Um, and what your, you know, your trajectory is. So when you have a digital strategy, um, you know, part of uh, part of executing a digital strategy is paying attention to what you're doing now and where you want to go. So over time, part of that strategy might be 
um, executing a certain number of, of campaigns or, you know, really uh, optimizing, you know, you might spend more time on search um, so and social and email and, you know, organic channels. And you might be able to do that with, with one to two people, maybe an outside resource. Um, and then, you know, if that strategy is aligned with what your revenue goals are and you do see it working, then you can over time make strategic, you know, hires and investments. So it might be um, over time, you know, you uh, you start with that that core team of one to two um, marketing generalists, and then you may invest in, you know, an SEO specialist, or you may invest in outsource um, SEO support. Um, and then over time, you may find um, the growth levers that are working for you. So let's say search, is is drawing a lot of really great early journey traffic um, for you and you invest in search search talent for your company um, what you might uh, lack then or what you might want to um, think about growing into then is more content development so when you get early journey traffic to your website what you know how are you converting them what are the you know what are the lead gen opportunities you're providing? Um, so that's where you know you may start by outsourcing that type of content development and content strategy, and then of course you know once you see the um, the the return on that investment, start investing in content talent, so on and so forth. Um, so you know I think that a, a healthy approach, especially if you're taking a demand gen approach, um, is to have um, one person who's overseeing the, the full department one person who's overseeing um, demand gen on the client side and then recruitment marketing. And then as you have the specific channels underneath um, each of those areas, developing out you know, teams and talent um, under, under those specific areas, depending of course on what your ultimate strategy is. Great, gosh, great information there, good insights. Um, we, we're gonna do one more question, just I know we're over the hour, uh, but real quick, um, uh, I know Ronnie submitted a question. What are some of the major differences people should keep in mind in building a B2B marketing strategy versus uh, a B2C candidate strategy? Uh, and are there differences? Yes, um, they are two different audiences. Um, you know, when you are thinking about, so of course, not only is it different between those two general audiences, but it's going to be different, um, you know, from company to company. And if, for instance, you're a staffing company and you um, provide, you know, staffing for a wide range of industries, the way you're talking to a light industrial audience is going to be different than the way you're reaching a tech audience. Um, when you think about on the candidate side, you know, that light industrial, uh, you know, the warehouse audience may be more mobile. They may be more open to um, faster, you know, placement and interaction through um, chat, even automated chat. Um, the tech side, you you know, you may be higher touch, and you know, you would use different channels to reach them. Um, on the client side, you you know, you are more likely ha you have a, a longer cycle that you're uh, you're you're planning for. Um, you do you know. You start from that that early journey of helping you know val you know approach the uh, business problems they're trying to solve. Um, you're also thinking about different people on the client side, so it's not just you know who is the the ultimate person who's going to sign this contract, but who are the people who are going to you know immediately feeling these pain points? How does it affect you know the you know their boss? Um, how does you know um, how does that person's uh, position affect? The, um, the decision, you know, you know, how do, how can we speak uh, to their challenges and their goals, and again progress toward having them understand I'm a resource to help you solve this problem. How can we, you know, begin a relationship with your organization um, that helps your organization be more successful? But you know, on a lot of levels, you know, you need to solve those individual problems. So really, it goes back to the idea of it's not about you; it's about them. So taking that step to say. This is what we do. Here are the people we help, and starting from that outer area where you're um, under, you're speaking to you know what their problems are, what their objectives are, um, and mapping it to again offering that service or solution or job. Thank you, Gina. I feel like we could talk about this for another thirty minutes yes, uh, with questions. So yeah, appreciate everything as everyone submitted and what we've talked about so far. Uh, I'm gonna turn it back over to Mike. We're gonna close this webinar out. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Alan and, and Gina and Lori. Uh, amazing job. Um, 
you know, definitely some great content and hope everyone found it as valuable as I did. So I know we're slightly over. Um, so to close it out, we will be sending out an email recap. Um, I know there were some questions that we were unable to get to. So in the email, we'll obviously send a, a copy of this recording out um, for the, anyone that joined late and wasn't able to, uh, to catch the beginning. Um, you'll be able to log in and see that. And then we will follow up individually uh, to make sure that your questions were addressed. So if it's geared towards ClearEdge, um, Lori, Gina will uh, will be following up. And then anything that was geared towards advanced partners um, or anything you know outside of the scope of ClearEdge, we'll be able to follow up with you and make sure that that's addressed. But thank you guys so much for joining. Um, great session. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everyone.